We got a problem, my dudes. It's gray sweatpants season. And I got plenty of gray sweatpants. That ain't the problem. That ain't the problem. Except for that is exactly the problem because the only gray clothing that I own is a pair of washed out black jeans and a sweater I was given for Christmas. But honestly, your genitals don't need to be visible through your pants to be large and in charge. In fact, I would rather they not be visible through your pants, okay? Please, thank you. Hi all, it's Milo. So while we will be keeping everything in our pants, this video is going to be about, you guessed it, bottom growth. So late last year, I made a video talking about how I was going T for T, meaning that I am a trans person and I started exclusively swiping right on other trans and non-binary people. I stopped dating cis people basically. And a big factor affecting my dating experiences is that I have a visibly trans, medically transitioning body with a flat chest and signs that I have taken testosterone, like having bottom growth. I love having bottom growth and generally just love having sex with people who have bottom growth, but it is something that I see people online who are either pre-T or not medically transitioning saying that they are hesitant about. I want to instead talk about all the euphoric and interesting and pleasurable things that I experience as someone with bottom growth and as someone who has had sex with people with bottom growth to combat the stigma that bottom growth is unattractive or gross. Of course, it's totally okay to be an AFAB trans person and not want bottom growth. And if that is something that's coming up when you're thinking about the possibility of starting tea, I highly encourage you to bring up that hesitancy with your doctor or therapist or like a professional support network. A big trigger warning that I'm going to be using terms for anatomy and sex in this video. I use the word clitoris to describe my own junk. So if that is a word that you don't want to hear, you can totally just skip this video. So for the cis people in my audience and those who have not yet fallen down an HRT research hole, hey, maybe that's a hole you're falling down right now. Let this video be the start. That's totally cool. Bottom growth refers to an effect of taking testosterone where the glands of the clitoris can expand in both length and girth. Different trans people may call it their dick, their T-dick, their peen, their clitoris, or just their growth. If you're having sex with a trans person, regardless of what their genitals look like or if they have growth, it would be a great idea to ask them what term they use to describe their genitals because it would be really awkward and could potentially make the person dysphoric if you use a term that they don't find is affirming and matches how they experience their body. So what are the logistical facts about having bot growth? What is it gonna actually be like to have growth? I found this article that talks about the development of the clitoral phallus, which basically goes into what biological processes make that body part either grow into a clitoris or a penis. I'd like to highlight this quote specifically talking about trans patients who are taking testosterone. Studies have found enlargement of the clitoral phallus of up to 3.82 to 4.6 centimeters over one to two years of systemic testosterone treatment. It has been suggested that earlier exposure to androgens by patients translates into greater growth. The studies at this article cites use some... <laughs> somewhat outdated language, but I will link this article and the two studies in the description. I just think it's super cool that there have actually been studies documenting how long your growth can actually get on testosterone. How growth affects the feeling of sexual stimulation can be different on different bodies. A lot of people experience heightened sensitivity in their growth, especially within the first few months of starting testosterone, to the point where it can actually feel uncomfortable to wear tight-fitting clothing that creates friction with the bits. Personally, I have a theory that I think bottom growth might have made my clit a little bit less sensitive, which is totally fine. I'm totally content with how tea has affected my body. I just know that Masturbating with my hands is not gonna get me to orgasm. And so I use a vibrator instead. And I'm really happy with that. But I also didn't really masturbate before I started testosterone. So I don't think I can actually know if testosterone was what caused it. Or if like that's just how my body has always been. I think one reason why sensations might feel different on my clit, possibly with bottom growth, is because my clit sticks out past the clitoral hood and my labia. 
So there's just a little bit that is more exposed than it might have been before bottom growth. My clit is kind of like an uncircumcised dick with foreskin that only covers half of it. But your experiences with testosterone and bottom growth could be completely different from mine because testosterone affects bodies differently and all vulvas are different to begin with. So with the logistics out of the way, I'm gonna get into how bottom growth affects dysphoria and euphoria, how to have sex with bottom growth, and is that sex different if it's with a trans or a cis person? If you've watched like any of my previous videos, you will know that some, but not all trans people experience bottom dysphoria, as well as like any other possible type of dysphoria. The unfortunate thing about testosterone is that it can't grow you a fully fledged penis and testicles, nor does it take your preference to not have bottom growth into consideration. I've heard some trans people online suggesting that you can control what effects of testosterone you get by taking finasteride or dutasteride, which prevent male pattern baldness and they can decrease or stop body and facial hair growth and bottom growth. But unfortunately, they have also been connected to increased depression and risk of self-harm. I don't have any personal experience with these medications, nor am I a doctor, so I won't comment on whether or not these are actually a viable way to pick and choose what effects of testosterone you want. I actually felt really neutral about the future of having bottom growth when I decided to start taking testosterone. I've had off and on bottom dysphoria basically my entire life, but before I started taking testosterone, I wasn't having partnered or solo sex. So bottom growth didn't seem like it would actually change anything about my life. Boy, was I wrong. Whew. Before taking testosterone, I really didn't have any idea what my clit looked or felt like. Besides for maybe one time when I used a mirror to learn how to put in a tampon. So when I masturbated for the first time, I was honestly a little bit shocked by my bottom growth. My college roommate had gone home for the weekend, so one Friday night, I finally gave in to the libido that testosterone had given me. So I lit some candles, put on some music, went to town, but it wasn't long before I was sitting on the floor of my bathroom, looking at my clit in the mirror and Googling what is the average size of bottom growth on testosterone. I had not expected it to grow as much or as quickly as it had. Seriously, I was maybe a few weeks on testosterone. Like I had not been taking testosterone for that long at all. And I know it's a joke that trans groups and forums are full of posts like, I'm one month on testosterone and I already noticed bottom growth. Is that normal? Is my dose too high? Am I gonna die? But that was seriously me in 2016. And yes, the time that you start seeing specific changes can definitely vary between bodies, but I have heard from a lot of folks that bottom growth was one of the first changes that they noticed on testosterone. In that moment of shock, and actually for a few months after, having bottom growth didn't affect the way that I perceived my body as being gendered. It didn't necessarily give me dysphoria or euphoria because I mostly just didn't acknowledge the fact that I had bottom growth, nor was I having any sexual partners who would notice my bottom growth. Now, however, I have a much different perspective of my bond growth and going T for T is one of the top factors that changed that. I now get a lot of gender euphoria from having bond growth, not because it feels like I have a penis, but because it makes me feel like my body doesn't fit into either binary sex category. And like, it's just sexy. Like who doesn't want like a bigger dick? Like I know some people wouldn't for sure. Absolutely. But I just want to feel so, I just feel so positive about my bits. I have a large clitoris, hashtag big clit energy. That is an irreversible effect of taking testosterone. My body is forever changed and is forever not fitting into the category of assigned female at birth. Like arguably I would say it was never female, but now I can visibly point to parts of my body that are not female. For sure, there are some times when I wish that my genitals looked more like a cisgender penis, but so far that feeling hasn't ever been strong or consistent enough to motivate me to get bottom surgery, and I don't know if it ever will. For some trans people, their bottom growth brings them euphoria for reasons other than my reasons. For some trans people, they feel like their bottom growth does feel and act like a penis. 
For that reason, pumping is popular among trans people who either have or want to get bottom growth. There are a lot of different types of pumps, like this one that's called the Trans Mask Pump from the New York Toy Collective. This pump is sold by a number of different online stores, so I will put a few links in the description with my affiliate code. So if you want to get a discount on this product, you can using my link. And I do get a small commission at no extra cost to you. So pumps will look slightly different, but they all have the basic components of all generally having a cylinder, which is what goes over your genitals, and then a valve to control airflow and a pump that actually will suck out the air of the cylinder when it's pressed against your body. Pumping increases airflow, making your genitals more sensitive and pulling your growth away from your body. The growth that you see from pumping will only be visible temporarily after use unless you make a regular habit of pumping, which Cade Cooks has a great tutorial on if that is something that you do want to do more long-term. Growth from pumping and or testosterone use makes it easier to use toys like strokers that actually involve a little bit of penetration. So it can give the feeling of having a penis if that is something that you enjoy. What was that word you used? A stroker? Yeah, so having bottom growth doesn't have to change the way that you masturbate or have sex, but it can if you want to try different toys, different positions, or if different types of touch feel better with bottom growth. A stroker is a sex toy that is easiest to use if you have bottom growth. Strokers resemble a masturbation sleeve that a cis man might use, with an opening to put growth inside of, and then textured sides that create nice sensations when you rub the stroker along your genitals. Some strokers are open-ended on both sides, but others are only open on the side that you put your growth into, meaning they also add suction if that is a sensation you're into. There aren't a ton of sex toys that are designed for bottom growth besides for strokers and pack and play toys that look like penises. So if you don't want something that looks like a penis or feels like penetration, there's not a lot out there that's specifically made for your body. And that does suck, but you really can use any type of vibrator that you might be interested in. I'm starting a trans pleasure series to give advice on how to have the best partnered or solo sex, especially as someone who has bottom growth. So stay tuned and follow me on Instagram if you are interested in seeing sex toy reviews and more advice videos. Beyond toys, you can play around with other types of touch sensation. You have a whole new area of super sensitive tissue to explore, and the only way you're gonna learn what feels pleasurable is by experimenting. And if you're someone who enjoys touch, a good partner for you will also be ecstatic about pleasuring your growth. I can't say that I have ever dated or had sex with someone who had a bad reaction to me having growth. Honestly, like, fuck, not literally, anyone who has a problem with your bottom growth. Because, like, what is not to love about just having more sensitive tissue? Like, that sounds great. There's more to put in your mouth. Also, I don't think you could tell, but this whole time I've had a card in the background of my video that says, Big Clit Energy. I will put a link to the Etsy store that I got that from in the description. But I have noticed a super big distinction in the T for T sexual experiences I've had compared to experiences I've had with cis people. So let's talk about it. Do you know how when you're first becoming sexually active, it's a little bit awkward at first to get naked around someone? Like maybe you're not used to the experience or you're worried about what they're gonna say or think about your body. So you're just super self-conscious. But as you start to have sex more, you realize that anyone who is worth your time to have sex with isn't going to be turned off by what your body looks like since they're already attracted to you before you get naked. So you just don't even think about your body anymore when you get naked to have sex. So I had that experience, but on top of that experience, I went through the same thing, but with insecurity around my bottom growth and being worried about how the person I'm having sex with would react to my bottom growth. It's honestly something that I would totally forget about until I'm already naked and legs spread. And then I realize I am watching someone's reaction to seeing my large clit. Like sometimes it feels like they're sizing me up, which like, don't get me wrong. Like that's great if you look at me and you think I'm super sexy and you're like basking in my beauty. But sometimes it gets to a point where 
the staring has gone on for a little bit too long and it feels weird that the staring isn't also coming along with commentary like oh my god that's a great pussy or something like that you know that's what i want to hear <laughs> You know what they say about dirty talk. It, it matters less what you say and more how you say it. Something like that. <laughs> when I've had sex with cis people, no one has ever verbalized their reaction to seeing my bottom growth. So maybe it was a good reaction. Maybe they were like, that's super hot. But it was kind of weird that it was silent, you know? Maybe I just like to talk during sex too much, but like I need validation that like the stairs are good stairs, right? <laughs> when I dated cis people, they were always bi or pan because I felt like that was my best chance of finding someone who was into all parts of me. And I hoped that that would include genitals. I have definitely become conscious of the fact that some people I have dated probably didn't know what kind of genitals I had until we had sex. So I think in some cases it has genuinely been a shock to them. I'm not gonna wanna have sex with someone whose first question is what kind of genitals I have. So like, if we're gonna have sex, it needs to not matter to you. When I've had sex with cis people, it's always been fine. Like totally fine, just fine. Nothing weird ever happened in relation to my bottom growth other than like a cis man almost ripping skin off of my vagina because he thinks he needs to like pound my clitoris. No thank you, sir. That's when I'm like, okay, would you like me to show you how to touch my clit or would you like to hold the vibrator? And we just end up getting the wand out, lol. But hashtag not all cis men. I'm sure that there are cis men who know how to touch bottom growth and would genuinely enjoy the experience in a non-fetishistic way. I just haven't dated those men. When I've had sex with trans people, the experience has been so transformational for me. And I think that is a large part due to the fact that other trans people feel more comfortable commenting on and complimenting the parts of my body that are visibly trans. Totally for sure, there are definitely a lot of trans people who are like, don't perceive me. Like, I don't want you to comment on any of the ways that my body is gendered. But I think being able to read whether or not someone is gonna like that and also be able to communicate about like, how do you want to be complimented is a big skill in terms of like dating in a gender liberated way. <laughs> also, it is super validating to see a body that has the same parts as yours and see how sexy they are. The first time I had sex with another person who had bottom growth, I was embarrassingly nerdy about how excited I was about bottom growth that I gave them a drawing of a vulva with a big clit. Like I drew it for clarification and they ended up putting it on their wall. So it was like not unappreciated, even though in retrospect, it was probably super awkward. <laughs> Having sex with folks who have bottom growth made me feel more proud of mine, honestly, because I found that I enjoyed pleasuring someone who had bottom growth. So I felt more confident about asking other people to pleasure me with my bottom growth. Being T for T has also made me feel less insecure about what someone will think of all the trans parts of my body. And like all parts of my body are trans, right? But there are some parts that mentally I feel more insecure about and that I have more mental associations with my trans identity, if that makes sense. Because of course, all trans people have trans bodies, right? Like that's not just for medical transition. My current partner and I honestly didn't know whether the other was AMAB or AFAB until we were like having a conversation about puberty and coming out. Um, so uh, in our relationship, I have felt totally unafraid of what they think and feel about my body. And they are really good at affirming and validating my identity in bed in ways that are not awkward and that genuinely give me gender euphoria. And like, I don't pump often, but sometimes I do pump before or during sex. And seeing my partner reach for the pump or seeing my partner actually pump me and like genuinely visibly enjoy the experience makes me feel so good because they are being excited about something that I'm also really excited about because it gives me gender euphoria and that like, 
just gives me more euphoria because someone else is validating it and it feels so good. They also compliment my chest a lot since I've had top surgery and they don't just accept the fact that I have a flat chest, but they really find it attractive and they're really good at complimenting and pointing out how my body is both masculine and feminine in some ways and that they find that attractive. Ugh, I just love them so much. There could totally be cis people who are just as good of a partner to a trans person. I think that these types of experiences come more easily to me when I am with someone who is also trans or non-binary because in those situations, I think that my partners have had a better idea of what makes me dysphoric or euphoric and they grasp that understanding quicker and more easily when I'm talking about my dysphoria and euphoria. And it just accumulates into this really safe and comfortable feeling in a relationship that I am really enjoying. So, so far, like nine months in, my t for t experience is going great. Let me know in the comments below if you have bottom growth or you've had sex with someone who has bottom growth, what have those experiences been like? And maybe you're someone who is thinking about having bottom growth. What are your your thoughts about it? Let's, let's talk about some fears and just support each other regardless of what our specific desires for our bodies are. Thank you so much for watching and an extra special thank you to my patrons, especially Lucy Goose and Amanda B. You can check out my Patreon linked in the description. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.